what if, what if there really is an all-powerful creator God like the Bible says? And what does that really mean for your life and mine now and a long way off? And what if this verse is really true? So let me suggest this. Consider something. I'll even suggest that it happens to be more vital than anything else in your life right now. It's just this. The death rate is now and always has been 100%. It's going to hit all of us at some point on our future timeline, and it's coming. So, one split second from right now starts your and my future. Is there any kind of antidote for this natural human fear that we all experience? when we think about you know, the unknown, like our own deaths. Here's the next thing for you to consider. What if, just what if, the Bible truly is the inspired Word of God? Why the Bible? Well, that's a fair question because it gives solid evidence, that's why, solid evidence of being a supernatural ancient archive. A lot of the text verified by archaeological finds, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, other ancient records. Well, so be it. But that's an automatic rejection of Christ's powerful words of warning and invitation. First, the warning. He said this, repent. And that just means really to acknowledge and to turn around. Many Bible passages speak to that. So it's either accept or turn away. The turn away part, call that just ignore if you want, keeps you on the broad road. Which broad road, you might ask? Well, it's the one that Christ warned us about. Yeah, there's really an eternal heaven to gain and an eternal hell to shun. Many statements of Jesus and those assigned to write the Bible books speak of both ultimate destinations for every human being. Every one of us is going to spend eternity in one place or the other. The broad road majority will face the horror of their forever destiny at death. Too unimaginably horrible to even think about really. And that's so sad, so tragic. At that point, of course, their fate is sealed for all time, for all eternity. You find that hard to accept? Well, so do a lot of us. This is God's universe, and He sets the laws. Denying them is an, a, as effective as denying that you don't have to be bound by the law of gravitation. So try jumping off a building and see how that works out. So here's my point. Here's number two. Jesus Christ, He is the focus of the New Testament in the Bible, His coming, His mission, His horrible death. Yeah, and most importantly, you know, Christ's historically verifiable resurrection from the grave three days after His horrible, torturous murder on the cross, they all give powerful evidence of the supernatural character of this book, the Bible. Maybe the strongest testimony to the person, nature, and work of the Lord Jesus Christ is in the Gospel of John. And I urge you to read it carefully if you've never done so previously. In the opening of this remarkable record, the Apostle John, one of Christ's 12 chosen disciples, of course, says this, the Word, the Word of God, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. In John's symbolic description of Jesus, you know, Jesus gave a strong and blunt appraisal to us concerning who He is in that Gospel of John. Christ said this, He said, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Pretty strong claim, isn't it? If God truly gave a message of redemption and hope for mankind in the person of Jesus Christ, you know, we better pay real close attention to what He and those who God chose said to us. Now, I talked earlier about repentance. 
Here it is, firing with both barrels. You and I will stand before God one day. Wow, if you aren't dead bang certain that you're right with God, if you can't say with complete assurance that you'd be in eternal heaven if you died tonight, nothing could be more important for you right now. Yeah, it's about that tr dreaded politically incorrect S word also, isn't it? And that S word is sin. Here's what the Bible says about that. And you know, if you don't accept the fact of humanity's fall, then it's game over. You might as well just party hardy for the rest of your days. The sin pandemic has infected the whole human race. This rebellion and rejection of God described in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and then throughout many of the books in the Bible. That's the bad news. It leads human beings, all of us, after death into an eternity of God's wrath if we haven't turned around. But the good news, the good news is ahead as I close this little video with the final point, number three. It's about what the Bible calls being saved. Saved from what? Well, we spoke of that earlier. The broad road most take into eternal darkness away from the presence of God forever. And here's just three of a number of New Testament passages that speak of this great, more than just good, news for those who make the right choice. Here's your invitation from God. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved, the Bible tells us. And here's the second. The scripture says, it's by grace you have been saved. The grace of God, that means mercy of God, the grace of God, that you've been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, not of anything we could do, it's the gift of God. Now lastly, listen to Jesus himself as he gave us these terrific words of promise. Here's what he said. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes, believes from the heart, him who sent me, that one has eternal life and will not be judged, but has literally crossed over, crossed over from death to life. If you want to know for certain that if you died tonight, you'd immediately experience that unimaginable joy and glory of heaven with the eternal God and His Son, Jesus Christ, forever, no end of bliss and joy with the God who created you, you might consider this. so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life